hypothetical question for you. Okay. Have you ever bought a whiskey based on the recommendations and reactions of those around you? You try it, you hate it though. You don't know what everybody else is going on about. Then you realize you don't trust anybody anymore. If they could like that whiskey, they must be bad people with bad taste. You hate this whiskey. This is a horrible whiskey. Then the bank realizes you're so bad with money, they should just take it all and close your accounts. You don't even have access to your funds anymore. And then your wife wants a divorce. And the kids, they call you Steve. Who's Steve? And then they don't look at you. Apparently there's a Steve in the mix. You don't know who he is or what he's doing. And then you're not sure, but you're pretty sure that somehow your dick's shrinking? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Ideally, uh, there'd be a way to fix that whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Cool, I'm gonna. How to fix that whiskey you hate. Because I think everybody's kind of been in this position where you hear a lot of good things about a whiskey, you're very excited about it, tons of people love it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And often you buy something on a recommendation yeah. or like a review yeah. and you're like, you get it home and you yeah. think, I I'm not experiencing any of the same things that they were experiencing. Yeah, yeah. So now, did I just throw 50 bucks down the tube? Usually your options are always like, well, I'll mix it with Coke or I'll put it in the cocktail. You are going to show us because you yeah. do blending. This is not the, the rules that you would use to do, to blend at a distillery. Okay. Or big barrel yeah. releases. This is, this is, home. This is home bar. Yeah. Good, good, good. And so we're gonna simplify some things. But first, mm -hmm. the first whiskey I, I ever had that I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Okay. It was Brimstone from Balconis. So you and I are gonna go through the steps of blending whiskey. Yeah, with my method and how oh. I approach it. Okay, uh, fixing a whiskey. Yeah. Let's uh, have Brianna, you make your own blend. Yes. Yeah. Access to any bottle in this room. But you're gonna start with so brimstone. Decision. You're gonna start, start with, with brimstone. Yeah, yeah. So you have to fix that. If you need to start over at any point, let me know. Because at home, you're not necessarily gonna have like Erlenmeyer flasks and graduated cylinders mm -hmm. and things like that, right? So. You're just gonna have something that you can get a consistent measurement with, Tiny. either halfway or one quarter, mm -hmm. right? So there you go, there's your mixing there. You? And another glass where you can pour the whiskey that you wanna add into there without yeah. screwing things up, yeah. okay. right? So there you go. Good luck. May the gods be with you. We're gonna mess with this. Okay. Now, uh, go, go do things. Are you gonna do a version and I do a version? Well, I'm gonna show you, yeah. I'm gonna walk you through my solution first okay. and how I got there. Yeah, yeah. And we'll see if that has legs. And then we'll play with that. And by the way, if you have three bottles in your collection, that's all you need to do this at home. Yeah. You just need three. Mm -hmm. So there's a theory that I, uh, that I originally learned from Nancy Fraley, but it's mm -hmm. called like the triangle or the, um, the uh, pyramid level of blending, which is you start with a base, okay. then you have a, a rounder, and then you have an accent flare. It gets smaller and smaller as a it goes up. Base, right? A base, a rounder, a rounder for the mid palate, an and an accent. Okay. So I worked on that theory for this one. Okay. So the first thing I always try to do mm -hmm. is figure out it, just because I don't like the whiskey doesn't mean it's going to be the base. Okay. But it could be. Right, right. So we're going to start with. I, mean, I, I guess that makes sense. If something is totally heinous, maybe you just use it as an accent over time. Right. To get through it, or you just give it to a friend you don't like. Right. So we're going to do one where the brimstone is equal mm -hmm. to the rounder, yeah. one where the rounder is half and one where brimstone is half. My first attempt to fix brimstone was with Jameson. Now what were you wanting to get out of the Jameson and into the brimstone? What I was wanting was to see if I could just recreate a slightly smoky Irish whiskey like Conmara, okay. which I thought might be really great. Okay, so right? Jameson is the base. Well, I thought. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But this is the thing. I didn't know whether it would be good with the base. Mm -hmm. First time I just poured Jameson in a little dash of brimstone. Yeah. And I was like, that's nice, but I feel like it could be better. Mm -hmm. That's level one of mixing. Just yeah. throw some shit together and see what happens. Yeah. This is a little more scientific. Sure. So what we're going to do is this one is going to be double the Jameson to the brimstone. Right. This one is equal parts brimstone Jameson. Mm -hmm. And this one is half the amount of Jameson. So first, See what you think, because I came to a conclusion from these three. I kind of, so. Did you say fix? Yeah, yeah. Eh. Improve? Yeah. Yeah. You know what, okay, whoa. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very different. Very different? Yeah. 
This one, so it's gonna be uh, more subtle. More Jameson. Equal. Yeah, more Beast Jameson, Jameson also is more molasses. Yeah, it well it opened up, up the, woke up the yeah, molasses, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now this is most Jameson. Okay, so between the three, mm -hmm. I'm leaning towards this one. Now taste it, yeah. just the tiniest, the tiniest sip you can get, because we don't want to with the proportions too much. Oh, dude. Come on, man. We gotta start with something shittier than that, because that's already, that's really all nice. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. but did you try that one? No. Okay, try that one. This is a lot tighter yep. on the nose. There's, it's giving up less nose, but. Mm -hmm. Still that one. Okay, try still this that one. one. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you what I liked about First, this one. Second, third. I actually liked the middle one the most. The middle one is it's yeah. tight. It's not giving up. Yeah, like and I the like big, that. abundant nose. But I also agreed with that. Yeah. Right? So uh, this one just felt like a softer brimstone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Here's the this thing. one this actually like... felt punchier to okay. me. Okay. Like the brimstone got turned up somehow. didn't take me to Scotland. They don't respect my raw power. Oh, it's perfect. But when I summon the most potent manifestation of deliciousness, they'll see zero grams of sugar. 13 grams of protein. Only four to five net grams of carbs per serving. Rise forth, tasty pain. Reveal yourself, delicious suffering. <laughs> oh no, my triangle. Rise forth from the dead. Reveal your power unto me. Damn, is that the sloth? We meet again, tiny mooch. Oh, hey, buddy. Cool to see you, man. Where have you been? I've been dead. Pretty sure you beheaded me. Pretty sure. No, what? And this weird girl just raised me from the dead. Because I was dead. From beheading. Beheading? <laughs> That's crazy. I would never behead you, man. You're so not evil. I'm coming for you, tiny mooch, and I'm gonna use you like a hand puppet. With my paw. Up your back. Big thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. If you haven't tried it yet, you definitely should. My favorite flavor right now is the Frosted. You don't expect healthy cereal to taste good. This tastes really good. Look, zero total grams of sugar. We got four nectar carbs in this one. This is 13 grams of protein, tons of protein, and a delicious cereal. Magicspoon.com slash whiskey. You're gonna get $5 off. Uh, you can also just put in whiskey in the checkout there. Brianna, what's your favorite flavor? The fruity one. Did you? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Let's not stop there, because right now what I feel like I have is a base and a spice. Mm -hmm. I want them to add a, a mid-palate. No, you just said a base and a spice before you're saying base, rounder, mid. accent. Yeah, and I thought I was gonna get a rounder and that this was gonna right. be the accent and the mid. Mm -hmm. But instead, I, I wanted to turn this into the accent. Okay, so define rounder. So you got the base is pretty self-explanatory. Right. It's just like the main the thing body you're building on. Yeah. In my experience, that tends to sort of like fill things, but it doesn't reach this mid palate range that sort of coats and develops that base into complexity. Okay. So it's simplicity versus complexity. Okay. So in my and when I'm doing it, in my brain, I'm looking for the base to just be stable and good, mm -hmm. but not necessarily complex. Right. And then I want that second ingredient to add complexity to it without taking away from what you like about the base. Right. And then my little spice thing is just the thing, the unexpected sparkle for, and what we teach at Wizard Academy, the third gravitating body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little, whoa, nice. The unexpected thing that somehow works. Yeah. yeah. So what I wanted to do is make this Jamie the base, 
find something else to be the mid palate complexity mm -hmm. and let brimstone be the spice. The accent. And what I decided to do was. You're saying spice and accent yeah, yeah. interchangeably? Yeah. Okay. Spice and accent interchangeably. What I decided to do was see if I could add a really sherried oh, whiskey. Dalmore. Yeah, yeah. And I just grabbed the one Dalmar that was over there and easiest to grab at that mm -hmm. time, Valor, which is like a retail mm -hmm. uh, specialty. You end up with equal brimstone, equal. Dalmore, mm -hmm. and then the other half Jameson. Mm -hmm. You end up with equal proportions of all three, and you end up with equal Jamie to uh, Brimstone and so on. Okay. Right? Okay. So starting with the original, just to remind me. Mm -hmm. So the. Got it. Let's pick your favorite first. Okay. So. That's half brimstone and then a split between Jameson and well, Dalmore. Weirdly, the Dalmore gave it a lot more vanilla. Yeah, it really does. But if, it, if anything is going to give vanilla, I would expect it from the Jameson. I know, but yeah, it gets yeah. buried, doesn't it? Yeah. Now that's equal proportions of all three. That's not bad. Right? Yeah. And then that is half Jameson and then a split between brimstone and Dalmore. All right, hold on. I have a good job. <laughs> it's all good whiskey wow. on this table. It's like a caramel candy corn almost. On this. Yeah. It's amazing how definitely different these are. Yeah. Just, it's the same whiskeys, you're just adjusting the proportion. Yep. Yeah. And we're getting pretty dramatic with our increments. You can get like into one milliliter changes. Ooh. Ooh, it still has like the, yeah. like the wood varnish quality to it. Yeah, see, I land on the equal proportions one every time. I think you, yeah, because it has that. Um, that finish that I know mm -hmm. that you like. I like this one though, because it some weird somehow weirdly the vanilla wakes up and it kind of makes everything a little bit more melded and balanced. Yeah, we think we found a pretty good blend here, right? Sure. What do you think is missing from this? So this did become vanilla dominant. And I'm gonna add yours. I kinda wanna. Whatever you wanna do to yours, yeah. I'm gonna add to mine with no questions. Okay, I kinda wanna bring the fruit back a little bit. Okay, so when you're trying to add fruit back, what direction can we go? It can be any kind of wine cask. Sure. It can be, it could be a corn whiskey, but that's wine finished. Yeah, and I don't get a lot of fruitiness out of most corn whiskeys. Mm -hmm. That's gonna, I think, double down on the vanilla. Yeah, probably. Uh, I'm thinking like kind of a space side scotch fruity. Okay, it looks like um, even more, like Dalmore is Highlands uh, yeah, sherry. Yeah, yeah. So no. you think it's space side sherry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Glen Fittick or Glen Morangy. Okay, well, Glen Morangy has the classic four. Let's do the list on there. Okay. How are we doing, banana? Um, this is really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting if I've already poured something. <laughs> <laughs> this is why, look, this is why this is important. Take notes. It doesn't have to be discernible to anybody else but you. Here's your worst nightmare. You create one of the best things you've ever done. Yep. And you have no memory of the proportions. Mm -hmm. Which has happened to me. She's back there making multiple times the best blend in the history of blends, and she doesn't know how to. She has no idea. Yeah. So you already heard about the fundamentals. Let's mix three things. Let's look for a base around her spice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get all three of those from two whiskeys. Mm -hmm. If one of them is complex enough that it adds a middle and a spice, or a base and a middle on its own. Mm -hmm. So here's where you can it up. What we have experienced is if you, and there's a certain point of no return where you add too many complete peating things mm -hmm. and the whole blend collapses. Yeah. Like, it's not additive forever. It's right. not, you can add layer and layer and layer. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so complex. And uh, at a certain point, the house of cards collapses. Collapses. The flavor experience that you will have at that moment mm -hmm. is it will taste flat. Mm -hmm. And that, the moment you hit that, I have never been able to recover that. Yeah. I've always had to dump out and start over. Okay, so this is the Lasanta. Mm-hmm. Take oh, a sip. Yeah, that, so that brings a lot of sweetness, very candied fruits. Yeah. In yeah. And then you get to decide, remember that we're working in five mil increments effectively. Give me that. Where like one part is five mils. Five mils goes to... So you're just gonna go all in, huh? Well, that's five, Yeah. right? I wanna see how much I have. Okay, that'll just overwhelm You got probably it. 10 to 15 mil in there right, right I'm now. I'm gonna do two. Okay. You can always add more. You can't take it back out again. Remember that. You ready? What do you think? I'm gonna kind of be excited if it works, because that's a four whiskey blend, and that'll be really interesting. It's subtler than what I expected, but yeah. it's still there. It did take the vanilla down a notch. It did, it turned it more. Yeah, took the vanilla down a notch. More berries. Yeah. It's weird, everything else held, 
mm -hmm. except the vanilla lost a step or two. Okay. And then it filled in a little bit of the sweetness, uh, the fruity sweetness. Okay. Yeah. Try it. See what you think. Now our proportions are all going to be off at this point, just a little bit because of the sipping. But did it make it less so? I think it was, if anything, I think it, if anything, it was a lateral move. Okay. If different, it, it may be like ten percent not as cool as it was. Okay. Yeah, try that. Okay. Man, the last one. Mm-hmm. Okay, it did change sideways. Yeah. I did like the other one better. Yeah. yeah. But what I do like about bit. this one a little bit. is the smoke is an accent instead of a dominating feature. Mm -hmm. It is a little more rounded, fruity. That was that's yeah. more of a crowd pleaser that you just made. I'm gonna do the equivalent two milliliter pour add, and I think yeah. I think you are about to switch whiskey glasses. Ooh, that's got like a nutty quality on the nose. And it gets tangy. Tangy on though? The, on the finish. You get tangy mm -hmm. though? That's actually really good. That's actually legitimately really good. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Oh, almost a little like an orange peel finish. Yes. Oh. A little zest. That's really good. That's really good. Now, is it better mm, than the original? Then. Brimstone, and yours will go ahead and move over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, for what it is, just like a really woody molasses, who kind of smoke forward kind of experience, Brimstone is going to deliver that. But most people aren't living here. They're going to be more inclined to participate in a little, a little dose oh, of, of this. That's delicious. Uh, so, I would say that one is. Equal parts, if we're saying five mil, really nice. Really nice. Uh, yeah. five mil each of Jameson, mm -hmm. some Dalmore 12 or some equivalent to Dalmore 12, yeah. and Brimstone, yeah. and then a two milliliter equivalent of uh, La Santa Glenmorangie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that, in whatever portions we're gonna math that up, these, that's what we were just trying. We are not being fair at all. We just, we just named the winner, but we haven't even seen the performance of all the contestants. That's true, there is one. Remaining banana oh, con one? contestant. <laughs> okay. Now these two and the brimstone. This is old soul. Bur two bourbons. It's a straight bourbon whiskey. And a port bourbon. Yeah, okay. That one was smelling kind of like ketchup, french fries, and cheeseburgers to me. <laughs> Are you so, having a stroke? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That's going to go great. With the smoke? With the smoke. With the campfire? Yeah. I mean, I could get. McDonald's apple pie. No, <laughs> see, I'm getting a lot of ketchup. Very okay. sweet tomato. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, you're the judge, I guess. You try it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> Smell that. It's like. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I mean, it's like campfire and cleaning solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there's a there's a chemical going on. Yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you get the you get the oakiness. Oh, oh, try it though. Is the nose weirder than the taste? Yeah, yeah, it's actually not great, but it's not terrible. Yeah. Oh, it's it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, next one. Bucket list rye whiskey. Okay. A sherry cask Isla, the oh, dream, dream of, of smoke. Yeah, yeah oh, more smoke. It's an independent bottling, if I you remember. You just added more smoke to it. Oh, and a Family Jones straight rye, Atticus Jones. Okay, so. Two ryes and a smokier scotch. That is, you got the peat. With the brimstone. You got the peat and the rice spice. That's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll wake you up. Yeah, so, I will. Whoa. <laughs> Smell this. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait now. So, Slow rolling. Obviously, the peat is dominating. Oh, yes, yeah. It does. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's all wrong. All, all kinds of wrong. Dude. Make it. No. <laughs> mm. Have you even tried these? Yes. <laughs> what did you think? And you still They're brought all them up. pretty terrible. How did you not verbally <laughs> gasp back there? Oh, I was. Yeah. So it does, you literally can't just like throw shit to, unless this. Oh, oh. What is this? All of them. Oh. Everything that you oh, had? Oh, oh God. Chaz is gonna challenge your theory that once it collapses, you you're can't not bring it, it back. It. Yeah, here's what we're about to find out. It smells like I'm sitting in a dental chair. 
Yes, it definitely does. <laughs> I'm in the dentist office. Yeah, but some for some reason in the woods. Yeah, it tastes like water. You would never guess. What? It tastes like fla slightly flavored water. It's super flat. Yeah. When it comes to... Oh, it does. Yeah. You just kind of... <laughs> what is happening whenever you are combining flavors of multiple things and eventually it gets to the point where, like, they're canceling each other out? Do yeah, we I, know what's happening on a chemistry level that makes no, that just I mean, go... Somebody probably does, yeah. but I don't. So in the comments, if you know anybody with a chemistry background that also loves whiskey, that can tell us what is happening yeah, whenever please, you combine I'll, I'll a, lot, a lot of different layers and whiskeys together, and then once you get to a certain point, it just kind of falls flat. So, uh, this is yeah. her attempt to smell and taste ours. Oh, that smells really good. Yeah, right? Oh, it's so sweet. How did you do that? What's in this? <laughs> but, oh man, that smells good. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? We didn't start with a whiskey that we hate. Let's start with something that we know unimpressive. Because I think there's Just a lot boring. of boring, unimpressive. Okay. So like what? Oh, really? Okay. This, I think this is the kind of challenge that we're talking about. <laughs> this, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. This is the kind of thing where all of the money went into the bottle. I think if we can fix this, Brianna will buy you another lunch. Okay, I'm fine with that. It's oh, so yeah. one dimensional, a little bit of a sugary sweetness. I'm not even gonna say vanilla, it's just a little sugary alcohol. Mm hmm. Mm, it tastes like, ugh. It's very even a little bit of cinnamon. It's like pine salt on a carpet. One last challenge with a whiskey that is not impressive in any way. Yeah. One of the cool things about blending the whiskey, there is a tremendous amount of exploration that goes into this process. Whenever you add things together and think, oh, well, this has, it's very cinnamon forward, this one's oaky, and this one has vanilla, I'll put them all together and it will be cinnamon, oaky, vanilla. No, it doesn't really work like that, to your point, Daniel. Whenever you start combining things, some things will be emphasized, some, some things will be buried. Okay, so Are you familiar what yourself? you're gonna have to do is fast forward this whole section while I roam around, because it's gonna be really boring. Okay. And you guys have to not move the whole time. All right, hold still. Find your position. Oh, that's gonna get heavy after oh, a while. No. All right, heavy. here we go. <laughs> I should not have started like this. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I feel you buckling under the weight. No, I can do this. <laughs> no, you really can't. I'm very strong. You weigh 20 pounds wet. I... This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's very hot. It is hot. And I have my, stone, I have my hair scarf. Yeah. You, you have a hair scarf too. Yeah, I do. What are you guys you doing? You don't understand. You? What? <laughs> what? I mean, just what? Really what? There's just no... Ah, oh, this is the best I could do. Okay. I wanted to add a little bit of share of the dense sherry in the Tambu 15 is really nice and rich. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add a little bit of spice of smoke to see if I could bury some of that yeah. shitty ethanol. And then I was missing that sort of biscuity middle mm -hmm. palate thing. And so I thought maybe just a generic red breast small batch would let me kind of like widen out that vanilla. Right. And so this is equal proportions of these three. So that's actually quite a bit of the strike. And then 10% art bag. Oh, wow, okay, so that's only 10%. Mm -hmm. wow, wow, wow. Or less, it yeah. might be less. When you're working with smoke, smoky whiskeys, tiny amounts yeah. go a long, long way. Yes, they do. So you did See? equal parts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, part? those are equal parts. All right, I think these are doing a lot of heavy lifting because flavor. Yeah. There's the peatiness, it's obvious, and this is just probably adding some sweetness. What do you think? I actually really like it. It's not mm -hmm. bad. It's a huge difference. Oh from yeah, huge improvement. The OG. Even if you're very familiar and you like all of the whiskeys that you have at home, working with ingredients, layers that you like, whenever you pull this off well, you can try something completely new that carries those familiar flavors that you really enjoy. Yeah. But it's combined in a way that you don't have in a bottle by itself. Right. right. Yeah. Very smart. I wasn't listening. It's because I. <laughs> That's how we blend whiskeys, things that we think can be improved, things that we don't like, so we don't have to drop it in ice, mix it with Coke. In the comments below, if you have a pet blend, a bastard's blend, if you will, let's see what it is. I like to do the Glenlivet 12 with a few drops of Laphroaig 10 to make it interesting. What do you do? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha